All right, y'all, this month was a doozy. I read seven books. So the first book I read this month is Tosh Hart's Tolstoy by Katherine Ormsby, and this is an arc that I got from Simon & Schuster, and it's like literally the best thing ever. Um, it's one of my top books of the year. It's my favorite contemporary book that I've ever read. I feel so well represented. Um, if you haven't heard of this and you don't know what it is, this is a contemporary book and it follows our main character Tosh. She loves Tolstoy. So Tosh makes a web series and it is basically uh, the Lissy Bennett Diaries, but it's Anna Karenina. It's really great because she is also heteroromantic asexual, like moi. I really wanted to read this book because of the ace rep, but also it was just an interesting concept, like Lizzie Bennet Diaries is great. And I absolutely adored it. I like wrote in it. I had so much fun reading it. I'm so excited because I get to interview Catherine this month at SIA Book Fest, which is exciting. I don't have a review up of this yet because it's actually not coming out until June, um, but you should know it's scheduled, it's already up there, just waiting to publish. I loved it, I would highly recommend it whenever it does come out, you have to pick it up, like I will be throwing it at you basically once it's released. The next few books are all really short and I read them all in like 30 minutes or less and they're wonderful, but they're not actually fiction. I read poetry this month! Go Jenna. I'm actually studying poetry this month in my creative writing class and I really have been meaning to get into poetry for a long time. And so this month I had a bunch of gift cards from various things and so I was like, I'll just buy all the poetry. And so I read all the poetry as well. <laughs> the first one that I read, which is so good and I would highly recommend it, is called We Carry the Sky by Michaela Robin. You've probably seen this around. It's like all over Tumblr and everywhere that's like hipster. But it's really cool. The thing I love about these is that it's like so short and you can read it really quickly. But um, it's really cool because it's kind of like narrative poetry. This one doesn't have as much of a story as some of the other ones that I've read, but it's like really really short poems it's kind of like a sentence or two and it all kind of works together to make this overarching work of poetry and so it's just this really unique style that has started it's like contemporary poetry whatever and i just love it because you can like sit and stare at these poems forever and just be like man oh so good so good i really really enjoyed this one i would highly recommend this the second book of poetry i read is of course the princess saves herself in this one this is the one that started it all. The re-release of this just happened on Valentine's Day. This is actually like a real publisher picked it up. It has more poems than it did in the previous edition. And I just like, mm, mm, mm. literally so relatable. It was written by my good friend, Manda, who is Lady Book Mad. And she is demisexual, panromantic, I believe. I can't remember, but I know she's Demi for sure, which is on the ace spectrum. So I was like, yeah, and it was so good. I would, ha this one, like, mm, this one really got me. I didn't cry, but like, uh, they're so relatable. After that, to keep the poetry game going, I read Hummingbird by Sophia Elaine Hansen, who is wonderful and she's great. But um, I love, love, love this little collection. This one is really short as well. It's basically all about this relationship. Also, it has illustrations, so you should get on that. This one is definitely more narrative than the other two. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's so beautiful. There were definitely ones in here that I was like, ooh, I would appreciate this more if I were in a relationship. I don't know how to break this to you guys. I read Strange the Dream. This is not the arc, this is the sampler, but I wanted to make it, you know, like pretty so you would be like, yes, I know that book, I've seen it. Um, I had the amazing opportunity to get the e-arc of this. I reached out to Little Brown and they were like, yeah, sure, here you go. And I was like, okay. I read it in like two days and I devoured it. It was so good. If you were, if you were nervous about it, because you like Lainey Taylor, like you will not be disappointed. It was so good. Um, if you don't know what this is about, this is the story of Laszlo Strange, hence Strange the Dreamer. And he is this orphan who was raised by monks and he basically becomes a librarian. Um, but he has this dream to visit this city that kind of disappeared from society and it's called Weep. And it's just, oh, so good. There's like multiple POVs. The, the women are great. The men are okay. Laszlo is a cinnamon roll, and I highly, highly recommend this when it comes out. It comes out this month, so you don't have much longer to wait. I promise you it is worth it. Also, I figured out <laughs> I'm interviewing Lady Taylor next month. 
The last two books that I read are both poetry collections. Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur and Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth by Warsan Shire. I hope I said that correctly. Obviously Milk and Honey is a bestseller. It's everywhere. It's super, super mainstream. But I had to pick it up because I feel like it started all of this. It was really good. The thing about Milk and Honey is that it's a whole lot more sexual than I was looking for. It's still beautifully written and wonderful and I love it and oh there's so many relatable poems in here but also there was a lot of it that I was like mmm I don't relate to that or mmm that's a little uncomfortable but I would definitely recommend this if you if you've gotten out of a really bad relationship or if you've like broken up with anybody I like have not had any relationship experience so it was kind of like this one is super short it's very little but um, it is written by a 27, 28 year old woman. She's a woman of color and she is the one who did the poetry for Lemonade by Beyonce. I did not know this when I ordered it and Manda told me and I was like, I made such a good decision. It's very specific and it's a little bit hard to read just because of the subject matter and I don't know. It's so out of my comfort zone when it comes to like reading and like my experience this is like drastically different from anything that i've experienced and so it was really it was interesting to see that kind of uh perspective i think what is true with all of these collections they are quick they're short they're sweet they're wonderful but they definitely need to be read more than once and i think they need to be thought about more than just like oh i read it and it's done you know whereas with like long novels you can read it once and you're like, I'm good for a couple years, I don't need to go back. But like, I can definitely see myself in like five or six months or less, depending on how I feel, like rereading these because I think they are very poignant and I, I don't know, I just, I need more time with them, you know? They all went by so quickly that it was hard for me to like fully grasp it and appreciate it. That's why I kind of rated um, teaching my mother how to give birth so low on Goodreads because I haven't been able to like fully appreciate it and understand it but I can appreciate it like loosely, like what it is. It's really a cool thing. March is coming, let's do a quick TBR. I'm not gonna touch on this too long. I'm going on spring break in like three days. I'm going to Florida for the week and it's gonna be wonderful. But I have decided for that week, I'm gonna go on a social media break because I really wanna read a lot and I also just wanna like B. Let's go! More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I have not read any Adam Silvera yet, however, I am moderating a panel at SIA Book Fest, and on that panel, Adam Silvera, um, and I've been like meaning to read him for so long, and so I figured like, now is crunch time, like I gotta read this. The other one that I need to read this month is Spindle Fire by Alexa Hillier. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Um, I believe one of the main characters is blind. I need to read it before it comes out in April. Down Among the Sticks and Bones, and I haven't gotten to this one yet. I kind of started it the other night, but I just, like, I don't know. I wasn't in a reading mood because I've been doing it so much. So I'm hoping to get to this while I'm down in Florida because it's really quick and I'm really excited. What I've read so far is super interesting, so I can't wait to get to it. If you don't know, this is an arc of the sequel to Every Heart of Doorway, which I read in January, and I am beyond excited about it. It's going to be good. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so I have to finish this reread. I've read this before, but this one, this one just came out. So this is A Conjuring of Light. It's the third book and the finale to A Darker Shade of Magic. I got it signed. I went to the launch event. I got to interview V.E. Schwab. So you can go watch that if you've been dying to uh, hear some from her. But I'm so beyond excited. I've heard only great things. I've also heard that people cry literally like 40 pages into it, so I'm like not prepared at all. So February has been the longest month, honestly. Even though it's only 28 days, like I feel like it has been going on forever. Graduation's in like 65 days. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm dead inside. I still don't have a job for post-grad other than Panera, so I'm just like, mm, trusting in the Lord. God's got this right? But other than that, some of the exciting things I did this month, I did get to go back to Florida. I was shooting another video for a client, which was really fun. And then I also got to go to V.E. Schwab's launch event for A Conjuring of Light, which was so exciting. I made some exciting plans this month, even though I, I didn't like do a lot of fun stuff. Um, I bought tickets to see Waitress when I go in May, and I got front row seats, and I'm seeing Sarah Bareilles, and I'm just I also bought my flights. 
I haven't had my hotel booked yet, but I have my flights for New York, so I'm gonna be there May 30th to June 5th. So if you're in the area, if you're going to BookCon, let me know. I think I'm going to BookCon, I'm not doing BEA, but I will be around. I'm gonna crash all the photo shoots, so. I also got tickets to see Todrick Hall on his Straight Outta Oz tour, so I'm so excited. It's gonna be great. I'm seeing it like right before Dead Day, the night before Dead Day, before finals start, so I'm gonna be really pumped about that. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about is coming up this month in March. I'm gonna be at Sea of Book Fest for the first time ever. It's gonna be really fun. We have so many great booktubers who are going. Um, if you don't know what Sia is, it's this free book festival that happens in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's just Saturday. I think it's the 11th, maybe. But it's gonna be so much fun. I'm actually moderating a panel, like I said. It's not open to the public. It's just for like the schools, but it's gonna be super fun. It's my first time moderating, so I'm really nervous. But then on Saturday, we're gonna have a booktuber meetup. So if you're like, in the area, going to the festival, you wanna see us, you can go. That was kind of spearheaded by Trina. She came up with all of it, so she's really great. I'm super excited because I have three friends staying with me, and it's like the most random group ever. So we have the wonderful Sarah without an H, who's coming, and I'm so excited because I haven't seen her in so long. Haley, who I also haven't seen since September, Haley from These Book Lions. And last but not least, the most surprising, the most wonderful, Katie Strange. And if you don't know Katie, she's Vincent Van Stop. I haven't met her, but she's staying at my house and I'm so excited and I love her and it's gonna be fun. Otherwise, I got spring break. I'm going to Florida and I just am trying to juggle my life and hopefully I survive. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you read this month or if there's anything on my TBR that you're really excited about. And I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye.